something. Oof. Guys, it's Jay, and today I'm here with my June wrap-up part two. I read a total of 22 books so far. It is the 29th of June right now. Might get another book done. Don't know, probably not. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> The 7th, 8th, and 9th book that I read this month are all part of the same trilogy, and it is the Burn for Burn trilogy by Jenny Han. I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The series follows three girls, and their names are Lilia, Kat, and Mary, and they all have one thing in common. They want revenge. Lilia wants revenge on her best friend, Alex, who just so happens to be dating her younger sister. Kat wants her ex-best friend, Rennie, to get what she deserves. And Mary wants to get revenge on Reeve, who is a boy who almost ruined her life years ago. And basically, the three girls come together, and they won't stop until their targets have been destroyed. The book is told in three perspectives, so Kat, Lilia, and Mary. I think Kat was my favorite voice. She was definitely the strongest. She was so bitchy and snarky, and I loved every second of it. At times, her bluntness... That's not a word, but I'm making it a word now was like a little bit much, but I appreciated her as a character anyways. Mary was like the shy girl. She didn't really come out of her shell until the second and third book. I really liked Mary as a main character in this book. I think that the reason that she wanted revenge was heartbreaking, the story behind it. It was upsetting to read. And then Lilia is kind of like the popular girl, she's like the double spy because she's playing both fields. She's best friends with Alex, Reeve, and Rennie who are the three targets. So it was really cool to read from her aspect because she kind of had to like deal with both sides of things. The only really problem I had with Lilia was that something major happened to her in the book and she kind of just brushed it off and it wasn't like dealt with very well, which really bothered me. I can't say what the major issue is because it will give the book away. Mostly the reason she brushed it off was because of Rennie. Because, because Rennie was like, we're never talking about this again! And like... That's one of the reasons why I really didn't like Rennie. She was kind of like that cheerleader, cliche, I hate everybody, I'm so popular kind of girl. I think the flow of the writing was really well done and the plot twists and pacing were really well done as well. And there were a lot of plot twists that I couldn't call at all, but then there were a lot that I did call, and I really like how there was like a balance between the two. There was definitely a lot of girl on girl hate and boy on boy hate and just like hate in general, which like is the main point of the story, but it got a little annoying at times because it was like, can we all just love each other please? Because like calm down, it's not that serious. Like chill fam, chill. There was a paranormal aspect in this series that I kind of was just like, why? Like I don't understand the point of this. It's more explained in the second two books, so like I kind of let it go afterwards, but when I read this book, I was just kind of like, what? Like, okay, let's just throw in a random paranormal thing for kicks. <laughs> okay. The cliffhanger in this book, like, I was so happy that I had the second and third books because the cliffhangers in this series is just ridiculous. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, that's how you're gonna end the book? Really? Really? So, like, I immediately picked up the second book, which is... Fire with Fire by Jenny Han and Siobhan Vivian. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I definitely enjoyed it more than Burn for Burn. I think that the cliffhanger was ridiculous. I was like, really? We're ending it like that? Again? Okay, cool. I definitely did not expect the ending that the book had, and I really liked how the whole Mary paranormal thing was explained. Although I'm still... Not 100% sure why it was thrown into a high school drama book, but whatever, it was enjoyable. And I'm also so happy that the thing with Lilia was discussed more in this book. She still kind of glossed over it, but at least it was discussed more. Because I think it's an important thing that should have been addressed in the first book, but it happened in the second book, so, you know, happy about that. The third and final book in the trilogy is Ashes to Ashes. It is also by Jenny Han and Sivan Vivian. I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. All I'm going to say about this book is that the epilogue was stupid. It made me really angry because it's not how I wanted it to end at all. And also Mary got some serious issues and she needs to deal with them. That's all I'm going to say about this book. Okay? Okay. The tenth book that I read for the month of June is Birthmarked by Kara O'Brien. 
And I gave this book a 2 out of 5 stars. I did not enjoy it that much. It's about a girl named Gaia Stone, and she is a midwife for the Enclave. Her job is to birth babies and basically advance them into the Enclave, which means that she hands them over to be raised inside of the walls of the Enclave. This basically meets the baby quota, and Gaia has always served the Enclave obediently until her parents are arrested as traitors and she starts to second guess and question everything she thought she knew. The only clue left for her is this hairband that has all of these really strange, mysterious symbols on them that might hold the answers in which the Enclave is looking for. Gaia really irritated me at times because she has this like huge scar on her face that she got from like running into some beeswax or something that was like cooking. I don't remember the details, but basically she has this huge scar on her face. And all she did the entire book was complain about how ugly she was and it was like, girl, girl be confident in yourself, like chill, like you're fine girl, nobody's even caring about your scar, like you're the one bringing attention to it by always saying how ugly you are, stop. I think that she was a very bland character overall and I didn't understand why everybody was like so fixated on helping her like all she had to do was be like hey can you help me and everybody would like bend over backwards to help her and it was like why like she's just some random girl from outside the walls like why is she so special all of a sudden it didn't make sense to me it really bothered me how pretty much all Gaia cared about was how other people perceived her and it was just like girl like stop caring so much nobody's paying attention to you nobody cares at all you're the only one who cares like Stop. I really enjoyed Leon as a character though. I think that he was a very well done character and I like how there wasn't a huge focus on the romance aspect of the book and it was more on the development of the story and plot. And I did really like how there was like flashbacks from Gaia's childhood thrown in there. I thought that that really helped develop her as a character although I still found her bland as I said. Except I found some of the concepts in the book really hard to read about. There was a lot of like incest talk and stuff like that. And I was just like, eh, okay, this is weird. So that was the only thing that I was kind of like, eh, no, I don't, no, 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 ow. The 11th book I read this month was Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. This is my first Rainbow Rowell book. I don't know why I spent so long not reading Rainbow Rowell. I absolutely love this book. I give it a 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Highly recommend. So cute. I read it in one sitting. The book follows Eleanor and Park and they are two high school misfits in the 80s and they need to figure out if love is enough. I really loved every single character in this book. I think Rainbow did an amazing job with her descriptions. I was able to picture them in my head so well. I think that Eleanor and Park were both relatable and unique in their own way. I loved Eleanor. I thought she was very sarcastic and witty and she just made me really happy. The only thing that really frustrated me with Eleanor was how as soon as Park would get close to her she'd be like, Stop, like, uh, uh, and she'd like push him away, and I was like, girl, come on, love him, Just bring in the love. I think that her story is heartbreaking. The things that she had to go through, like, I just wanted to hug her half the book. It did really bother me how she didn't really have any self confidence. And it was just like, girl, own yourself. You are such a boss. Like, come on, be confident. Which I know when you're a teenager, like, you're not confident most of the time, but like, I just thought she was such a cool character. I was like, love yourself like I love you. Come on, please. I loved Park, I loved how he stood up for Eleanor and finally stopped caring about what other people thought of him. That was like the best part of the book for me. I was like, yes, yes, embrace the love, embrace it, love it, yes, Park's mom. Can we just, can we just talk about Park's mom? She is my absolute favorite character in this book. I know she was very minor, but she made me so happy. I was literally reading the book and I would burst out laughing because I just found her so entertaining. Everything she said cracked me up. I absolutely hated Richie, which I understand is the whole point of the book. You're supposed to hate Richie, but anytime he was mentioned, I was like, I want to punch you in the face. I just, ugh, he bothered me so much. Insta love in the book was kind of irritating. One second they hate each other, the next thing they're like cuddling on the bus and I was like, when did this happen? I don't, okay. It worked for the book. And... I'm gonna let it slide because I love this book and 5 out of 5 stars, highly recommend, please read the book, so cute, love it, love it, love it. The 12th and final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of my wrap up is Reboot by Amy Tintera. I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The book follows Ren who is dead. At least she was for 178 minutes, making her the highest ranked reboot in her facility. Once you die, the longer it takes you to reboot, the stronger you are. 
So needless to say, 178 minutes, Ren is very strong. Since Ren is such a high number, she gets the opportunity to train newbies in combat and things like that for the company Hark, which is a human corporation. They basically use these reboots as bounty hunters. Ren usually picks the highest number newbie and that's who she trains because they usually have a better chance of survival out in the field and also they just take a lot less work to train. That is until she surprises everybody and picks Callum who is a 22. The whole concept of the reboots had me so excited to read this book. It sounded so cool and right from the first chapter Ren was kicking some serious butt and I was like hell yes I finally got a book with so much action and barely any romance. I was wrong. I was so wrong. I was so upset when I found out. The romance in this book made me roll my eyes so hard I'm pretty sure my retinas detached more than once. Don't get me wrong, I loved Callum and I loved Ren as individual characters put them together as a couple, and I wanted to lock them in separate rooms. They spent more time making out than actually doing anything, and like, they would be being chased by guards, and then they were making out. I was like, come on guys, like, you're, you're in danger, like, what, stop making, stop it, like, break apart, no more kissing, no more please. The only thing that really bothered me about Ren was how insecure she was about her scars, like, honestly, girl, nobody cares that you have scars on your chest. Nobody. And even if they did care, you could punch them and break their face with just your one punch. So, like, come on. Get over it. I also found it very confusing how Ren went from, like, a I-hate-everybody, no-nonsense kind of girl to, like, a pile of mush on the floor because of a guy. Like, I just didn't understand how, like, that happened. It was very sudden. I absolutely loved Callum, though. I thought he was hilarious. And I loved how much he challenged Ren and didn't take shit from her. Yes. I think that the book was very action-packed and fast-paced and thrilling. I really liked the first half of the book where it was more of the, like, fighting and breaking bones and stuff like that, and then the second half of the book, the romance came in and I was just like, stop, no, I don't, no, no, I just want the fighting to come back, please. Alright guys, so that was the next six books that I read in June. I will have a part three sometime, maybe a part four, who really knows what I'm gonna plan, not me, ever. <laughs> so I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!